On day one, I spawned in as a baby diamond warden in my diamond deep dark home. Suddenly, the ceiling opened up and lava poured down inside. Diamond wardens were set ablaze all around me. Ah, what's going on? Just then, the Void King burst into the room, killing one of my people in the process, followed by an army of Void Walkers. Finally, I found the Diamond Wardens. I'll melt all of you down and create the most powerful weapon ever. My people were getting killed left and right. I wanted to help them, but I was just a baby. I had to find my parents in the chaos. Luckily, they ran up behind me. Max, we don't have much time. You need to find the sacred caverns. What? The sacred caverns. They contain the power to defeat the king. Before I could ask for more information, the Void King came forward and incinerated them both. Mom! Dad! No! There was nothing I could do. I had to run. I almost got away safely, but I was spotted by the king's minions, and they chased me deep into the caves. On day two, I was being chased through the caves by the king's minions. I tried to escape them, but everywhere I went, they were already there waiting for me. Ah! How are you doing that? Our master has a tracker that can sense rare mobs. You'll never escape us. That was when I remembered I was a warden. I could use my echolocation to see where the goons were and avoid them. <laughs> I'm a super spy. Come out, come out wherever you are, little warden. The minions inch closer and closer to my hiding spot. I held my breath. They were about to spot me. Just just when I thought it was all over, the minions ran away. Huh, that was weird. Suddenly, my echolocation went off again. There was something right behind me. It was a massive void beast. I quickly ran away, but was met with a dead end, so I braced myself for battle. The beast was incredibly powerful and was able to do a spinning jump attack and emit a burst of purple flames. As a diamond warden, I had tough diamond skin to protect me from his claws, but even that wasn't strong enough to endure the onslaught of the void beast. I had to fight back, so I shouted out and managed to use my warden sonic boom attack. The power was strong, but the void beast was stronger. I continued to blast my sonic boom powers, but it did nothing to keep them at bay. I was too weak to fight them off. When I found an opening, I ran past them and deeper into the tunnels. On day three, I was still running through the tunnels. The room around me trembled from each step the void beast made. I knew that the horrible monster had to be close behind me. Come on, there's gotta be some place to hide. I ran as fast as I could, but the tremors got more and more intense. He was catching up quickly. The beast was about to reach me when the floor began to crumble beneath me. Ah! I plummeted into the darkness and landed in a brand new area. I was now inside of a cave full of magical red glowing rocks. I had never seen anything like it. Is this the sacred cavern my mom wanted me to find? Suddenly, I sensed something darting past me. Ah, who's there? I fired a warning shot in the creature's direction, and a little diamond wolf flew out. Please don't hurt me. I have to protect the mythical ingot. What do you mean? Before I had a chance to ask, the void beast fell down into the hole after me. The little puppy darted away, and I chased after her. Ah, wait up! I continued to follow the puppy in through a secret passageway. The passage was narrow, but since I was still a baby, I managed to slip behind the wolf. Stay away from me! Please, lady! I said stop following me! But I'm the last diamond warden! The wolf stopped in her tracks in a room with a strange ingot and turned around to face me. <gasps> you too? I'm the last diamond wolf! Suddenly, the void beast blasted a hole through the ceiling of the room. Take the ingot, now! Right! I snagged the ingot off its pedestal, and a great power swelled within me. I grew larger in size, my spine sharpened to be more powerful, and my diamond body gained an even brighter glow. I transformed into an adult diamond warden and gained 10 more hearts. Whoa, I feel incredible! The void beast lunged at me and I panicked. Suddenly, I shot out a row of diamond pillars from the ground that hit the beast. The ingot had given me a new power. I thought I could stand a chance now. I jumped into battle and took on the beast. The monster was still a powerful foe, but I used my new ability whenever I could, summoning multiple piercing diamond spikes into my enemy. His strength was overwhelming at times, but I used my supersonic powers to keep him at bay. Unfortunately, 
He was quick to jump straight back into the fight, even when I thought I was doing considerable damage. Dia dodged the Void Beast attacks as much as possible. She just wasn't ready to take on such a threatening opponent. Despite my new powers, they weren't enough to take out the monster. I was beginning to lose. If I didn't change my approach, both me and the wolf would be done for. I gotta try something else. I used quick thinking and targeted the ceiling with a sonic boom. The force of the attack knocked Rubble into the way of the Void Beast. Nice work! Thanks! You may have acquired this one, Max, but I will let you get a hold of the other five. Yeah, well, you'll have to catch him first. We will stop at nothing to do so. There's five more ingots? But before anyone could answer, the ground beneath my feet began to tremble. Something's coming! I'll explain everything later. Right now, we gotta keep moving. On days eight through 10, the Diamond Wolf and I escaped the underground cave system into a massive mining plant over the top of it. What? The Void King was mining out both of our homes for everything they were worth. He was leaving nothing behind. Keep your head down. Can't let them see us. Just then, I realized there were goons crawling all over this place. I was gonna have to stay hidden if we wanted to make our escape. Who are you? And what's the deal with these ingots? I'm Dia. The six ingots can be used to forge a weapon strong enough to defeat the Void King. You have one of them already? So there's only five more for you to find. Huh. I do want to avenge my people. I'm in. Just then, one of the Void Goons spotted us, alerting the others and running in our direction. Run away! Dia and I ran for our lives, but with their tracking device, it was nearly impossible for us to shake them off our tails. We ran for what seemed like ages, but managed to lose them for a moment. They could be around any corner. We had to build a base so that we're safe. Dia agreed, so I got to work on a new home, seeing as the Void King ravaged our old one. Using blocks of diamond from my body and some deep slate I had on hand, I created a base to protect D and I from the void monsters. I continued by inserting deep slate diamond accents to give that diamond warden look and castle elements to make it more fortified. Our deep slate diamond castle was underway. To finish things off, I added a small room for Dia, complete with a little doggy bed and bones for her to gnaw on. Suddenly, the ground began to tremble. It was the Void King stomping towards us. Quick, hide! On days 11 through 14, Dia and I took shelter on top of the base as the king arrived in front of our house. We watched on from our hiding spot as the king broke off a part of our structure, peering inside the base in search of us. The two of us tried to stay quiet, but the king was so close to finding us. Our hearts were racing and beating out of our chest. Even the littlest peep would have given us away and sealed our fate. You're close. I can sense the diamond you're made of. I will find you. You're never safe. Leaving Dia and I behind, the king trudged away, his massive feet making the ground quake with each ferocious step. Even though he was gone, we were still frozen in place with fear. Finally, we managed to muster up enough courage to leave our hiding spot. Wow, he broke through our base like nothing. That's when I noticed the king had dropped something. I walked over and picked it up. It was a map. And at the top, it was titled Emerald Mining Site. With no other leads as to the location of the next ingot, D and I headed out to follow the map and find the mining site. After traveling for a while, we finally arrived at a civilization of emerald turtles that had been captured by the Void King's forces. The turtles were trapped in a cage hanging over a lava pit. The Void King's goons were gonna melt them down into materials. I gotta go in and help them. No, Max, it's too dangerous. What about the ingots? I don't care if it's dangerous. I gotta help my fellow mineral mates. And so, I charged in to rescue the turtles. On days 15 through 17, I charged in to fight the goons. Immediately, I was surrounded on all sides by the enemies. Overwhelmed by their advantage of sheer numbers, I knew that I couldn't gain the upper hand if I continued fighting at close range. So, I broke free of their grasp and fired at them from a distance on top of a nearby house. The fight continued into the streets. The goons rushed to me, but I picked them off in mass using my sonic boom. Even still, it wasn't enough to hold them all back. I had no choice but to switch to my new power. A row of diamond pillars emerged from the ground, sprawling out towards the enemy and impaling them, finishing off the last of the nearby foes. Thanks to my adult form, I was able to take out a few of the lesser goons. Things seemed to be turning in my direction until the giant void beast from earlier appeared. You fool, you fell right into my trap. The void beast readied its claws. I knew I didn't stand a chance against him. Just then, I heard Dia call out to me. Max, we're coming! I turned to see Dia, who had opened the cage of emerald turtles and they were all rushing to my aid. They swarmed around the beast, 
and used everything in their power to try and hold the Void Beast off. But even with the might of an army, I knew they couldn't fight too long. Just then, their leader stepped up to me. You there, you possess one of the six mythical ingots. Come with me now, before the Void Beast overpowers my people. On days 18 through 21, I followed the turtle leader into a mysterious underground cavern. The room was shaking from the fighting above, and I knew they wouldn't hold the Void Beast off much longer. We don't have much time. I have the second ingot here, but you must complete the trial of the cave to obtain it. Can't you just give it to me? I would if I could, but those are the rules. I walked into the main area of the cavern alone, and a wall suddenly appeared, trapping me inside. I spotted the ingot and made my way forward until a mythical emerald beast dropped down from the ceiling. I am the guardian of the mythical ingot. You must fight me to obtain what you seek. All right, let's go. The guardian charged at me, and I fought him off the best I could. With a strike from the creature's massive fist, I was sent recoiling backwards. But I was no safer further away from it. In an attack similar to my own, the monster stomped down at its foot, shooting out a row of emerald crystals, stunning me in place. As if that weren't enough, it hurled blocks of emerald at me with unrelenting force, each impact inflicting a painful blow. Things were looking bleak. Its defenses were too strong. Undeterred, I rallied my strength and unleashed an assault of my own. I could feel the ground shaking harder outside, and I knew time was running out. Ugh, I don't have time for this! With one final massive blow, the mythical guardian submitted to me. Victory is yours. You may take the ingot. The mythical ingot was now mine for the taking. I quickly ran over and picked it up. I felt the power of the ingot surge through me. I gained five hearts and a fire breath ability. The guardian vanished, and so did the wall that was blocking my exit. I gotta get out there quick! On days 22 through 25, I returned to the battlefield to find that the Void Beast had destroyed almost all of the Emerald Turtles. I immediately charged in and used my new power to fight off the Void Beast. The Medicine Warden returns. Now die! The beast leapt into the air, and when he crashed down, a massive explosion sent me flying into lava. Hot, 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 hot! Every single attack had such immense strength behind it. But if I got too far away, he would blast me with void energy. Even though I was stronger now, it still seemed like it wasn't enough. The fight wasn't going well for me, but I came up with a plan. I've got it! I started to lure the void beast to the edge of the lava pit, and then I used my sonic boom to knock him in. Suddenly, our celebration was cut short by the arrival of the Void King. Come forward, Diamond Warden! I heard about the mess you made! Ah! Ah! I tried to flee, but I couldn't shake the king off of my tail. The brute was about to reach me, when suddenly the turtle leader jumped out. I can handle this. Go, seek the mage of mana. She can help you. Okay, thank you! Wait, take this! He handed me an attuned emerald and then lured the king away from me. As I was running, I saw the king kill him instantly. No! I kept running into the wild with a heavy heart. On days 26 through 28, I made it back to my base and set to work repairing the damages done by the king earlier. I built things back even better than they were the first time. There! Much better! As I continued to patch up my base, a group of emerald turtles arrived at my base. Oh! <laughs> Hello! Hello! Our leader is dead and we have no direction. We want to join your cause! That's great! Welcome aboard! While I was at it, I decided to do some expansion. I built an area for the new recruits, making sure they felt at home by building them a giant emerald turtle shell to live in. I added emerald accents around the whole structure along with lime green beds for everyone to sleep in. Next, I got to work making a consistent food source for the base, adding a wheat farm and a cow pen. After that was done, I built an area to store and display all of the mythical ingots I collected. There, I placed down the two I had so far. Finally, within the turtle's base, I added a monument to memorialize the turtle leader and the sacrifice he had made. I took the attuned emerald he had given me and displayed it there to honor him. I stood back to admire it, when suddenly a little squirrel ran in and snagged the emerald. Hey! Get back here! On days 29 through 32, I chased the squirrel into a strange forest. It was fast and small, and even climbed up trees when it could. Hey! Get down from there! I blasted my sonic boom at the tree in anger, causing the squirrel to fall and keep running. Suddenly, the squirrel turned a corner and I lost sight of it. I followed it around the same corner, but there was no squirrel there at all. Just a giant wall. I tried looking around the wall, but I couldn't find them. Ugh, where did they go? 
Just as I was about to give up, I saw a familiar face. Dia, what are you doing here? I saw the thief and followed behind you guys. I can sense great power emanating from behind this wall. Maybe they're this way. Well, that wall isn't budging. Oh, I think I have an idea. Dia stepped forward and did some kind of magic I had never seen before. Just like that, she walked through the wall. Uh -uh. What did you just do? <laughs> Come on through, it's fine. Let's hurry before that thief gets away. On days 33 through 35, I followed Dia through the door after the squirrel. We entered into some kind of beautiful mythical realm full of colorful crystals. Hey, there they are! I spotted the squirrel running into a complex structure, and I followed it inside. When I got there, it turned and looked at me. Uh, hello? Suddenly, the little fuzzy thing transformed into a human mage. Welcome, dear Max. I am the mage of mana. No way! I've been looking for you! I know. I stole the emerald in order to lure you here. I need your help. What do you need? The Void King is trying to hunt me down. And he has somehow gained access to my mythic realm. I need you to retrieve the next ingot and power up before he gets here. But I don't know where the next ingot is. You're in luck. Follow me. The Mage of Mana led me into another area that held a cool ancient cave. I knew that it must be the right place. As we entered further, I spotted the king's void goons approaching behind us. I need to hide. You're on your own now. Please, hurry. The mage vanished, and Dia and I were left to face the void. On days 36 through 39, the goons were getting too close for comfort, so I made a diversion using my sonic boom and tried to sneak away. While they were distracted, I was able to make it into the cave system. Once I entered, the door shut behind me, locking the goons outside. I looked around and noticed the whole place was lined with a ton of TNT. Oh no, this was a trap! I gotta get the ingot before it explodes! We ran through the area until I found the ingot sitting on a pedestal on the other side of the cave. Must be up there, let's go get it! Dia and I started running towards the platform to get across, when suddenly a massive lava creature rose from the lava in front of us. Not so fast. I can distract it. You run for the ingot. On days 40 through 43, I started platforming across the lava pit while Dia did her best to hold off the lava lord. Okay, nice and easy. I look back over at Dia. She was so tiny and the monster was so huge. She wasn't doing enough damage. I picked up the pace, but as I almost reached the ingot, Dia went down. Ah! I wanted to help Dia, but there wasn't enough time to help her and grab the ingot. I had to choose. Ugh. I do? Before I could decide, Dia started to glow. She floated up in the air and started to transform. Her body grew much bigger, evolving into a stronger diamond wolf. She landed back on her feet and ran back into battle. Go, Dia! She started attacking the Lava Lord, and in her new form, she had a new awesome power. A beam of glistening diamond crystals shot out of Dia's mouth, catching the light from the pools of lava surrounding us and shimmering in the air. The sharp edges of the crystal pierced through the monster's thick and scaly exterior. Even as the beast continued raining fire down onto her, with her new form, Dia had gained increased agility, weaving left and right to avoid his fiery blows from above. I was so focused on her epic battle that I forgot what I was doing. What are you waiting for? Get the ingot! Oh, right! I jumped the last few platforms and grabbed the ingot, but right after I took it, the ground started to shake. Whoa! What the? On days 44 through 46, I woke up outside of the temple with really low health. I didn't see Dia or the mythical ingot anywhere. Dia must have pulled me out of the cave. Dia, where are you? After searching around, I spotted her on the ground. Dia! Before my eyes, she transformed back into her baby form. Are you okay? Uh, I'm too weak to hold that form any longer. Suddenly, the Void King's thunderous footsteps echoed all around us. He was running right for us. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at you lying in the rubble. I found you, Diamond Warden. I can sense you wherever you go. I was sure I was done for, when suddenly the Mage of Mana appeared out of nowhere. Max, catch! The Mage tossed me the mythical ingot, and I immediately began to transform. My body grew even bigger than ever before, transforming into a massive Diamond Warden beast. I jumped into battle against the Void King with my extra five hearts, an upgraded blue firepower, and a new stomp ability. The Void King sliced, slashed, and stomped at me, but I retaliated with my more powerful upgraded fire attack. He retaliated with fire of his own. His massive axe hit like an absolute truck, 
but luckily, my reinforced diamond skin made his attacks hurt less. They were slow, but my diamond claws hit hard, but they glanced off his impenetrable armor. My sonic booms blasted him away, while the Void King attempted to close the distance and land a devastating blow. Even in my new form, he was too strong for me. I needed to run, but he was right on top of me. The massive Void King was about to deal his final blow when the Mage of Mana teleported in front of me. Go, run, I'll hold him off. I ran off while I could, but I looked back to see the Mage of Mana fall to the Void King. No, not again. On days 47 through 50, I escaped back to my home, feeling defeated. I can't believe I failed to save the Mage of Mana, even in my new form. I needed to get my mind off of everything, so I decided to take a moment to expand the base some more to adjust for my new size. I started off by adding more pillars to every corner of my base to keep watch of any incoming threats. Next, I fortified my base walls, making them as tall and sturdy as possible. No one's getting in here! I then built a memorial to honor the Mage of Mana's sacrifice. If it wasn't for her, my journey would have been over already. Afterwards, I expanded my ingot room to be a general treasure room, adding a bunch of chests to fill in the future with any spoils I end up collecting. Still three away from forging the ultimate weapon. Just then, one of the emerald turtles ran up to me. Max! Max, it's horrible! The void forces have infiltrated the base! Take me there. On days 51 through 54, I charge into battle to stop the Void Invaders. I'm not gonna let my home be taken from me again! As I began my assault against the attackers, I noticed they were more resilient than the previous Void minions. Even with my new and improved form, my abilities were proving much less effective. It seemed as though, like me, these goons had received an upgrade of their own. They looked more futuristic and heavily armored. I knew this fight was going to be much tougher than before, but I couldn't give up. I struck down onto them from above with my stomp ability, the sheer force crushing the invaders beneath my feet, causing the remaining foes to stagger back from the blow. I seized the opportunity to use my range attack, hitting them with a mighty sonic boom. Additionally, I utilized my improved flame breath, emitting a burst of blue embers from my jaw. Finally, I finished off the last of them with one more massive overhead stomp. After a massive battle, I managed to fight off the horde of invaders and defend my base for now. Once the dust had settled, I noticed one of the void creatures had dropped the letter on the ground. We've melted down enough rare mobs to allow us to begin forging the ultimate weapon. It will be completed in a matter of days, and with it, the void king will rule this realm. This is horrible! I have to do something before it's too late! My mind was racing to create a plan. Even if I wanted to slow them down, I didn't know where their base was. <laughs> Hang on, picked up a weird scent. Dia showed up and started to sniff the air and follow an invisible trail. I followed her, and after a short hike, we found a void goon building a portal. You'll never take me alive. The void goon jumped through the portal and escaped. We have to go after him. We jumped through the portal, not knowing what awaited on the other side. On days 55 through 57, Dia and I made it through the portal to find a massive nether castle. Looks like they led us right where we want to be. We scouted the outside of the area in search of an opening for infiltration. There was just one problem. I'm too big to sneak in there. I can spot it right away. Hang on, I have an idea. Dia picked up a nearby warped fungus and started to mix it with some other ingredients she brought. Here, drink this. Dia tossed over some kind of potion. I drank it and drank down until I was tiny. Ah, I'm so small. Don't worry, the effects won't last forever, but that means you have to be in and out quickly. With my shrunken form, I was able to walk right into the base. I still had to be stealthy, since my glow in the nether was really bright. After sneaking past a handful of guards, I was able to find the weapons room. A void mob was in the middle of assembling a piece of the ultimate weapon. Now's my chance. I started to sneak closer, but to my horror, the potion effect started to wear off. I was slowly returning to my normal size. No, not now. How'd you get in here? Intruder, intruder. On days 58 through 61, I was in the midst of infiltrating the Void King's weapon facility when I got spotted. I was fighting off guards left and right, but since the potion effects hadn't completely worn off, I was still tiny and powerless. I can't hold them off alone! Just as I thought all was lost, Dia crashed through a nearby window in her strengthened form. I'll hold them off! Find the weapon! Dia held off the goons and led them away while I got closer to my goal. Finally, I was right in front of the first phase of the ultimate weapon. With all of my might, I smashed my fist into it over and over. I had to break it completely to save everyone. With one final roar, the weapon shattered, revealing the core with another mythical ingot inside. 
Whoa! I'll be taking that! I grabbed the ingot and felt its power surge through me. I grew even bigger in size, getting more max hearts and a new Skulk Sword weapon. All right, time for some payback! With newfound strength, D and I charged valiantly into battle. Utilizing my new Skulk Sword weapon, I was able to hold back the nearby attackers. But when I looked towards Dia, I saw that she was getting overwhelmed. Their numbers were vast, and despite Dia's upgraded form, they still towered over the brave pup. Even as she barraged them with her beams of diamond crystals, they remained unwavering, charging at her and effortlessly flinging her into the air. I knew she couldn't take them on her own much longer. Determined to aid her, I swiftly moved to her side, unleashing a full arsenal of my abilities upon our foes. I enveloped them in searing flames with my fiery breath, sent them hurtling backwards with a powerful sonic boom, and crushed them beneath my feet with a resounding stomp. Taking out the remaining stragglers, we were able to wipe out the horde of goons. Oh, that was a rough one. Dia shrank back to her small form after being exhausted from the fight. We didn't get a chance to breathe, as alarms started blaring through the base to warn the rest of the guards. We don't have time to hang around. Let's go. Dia and I made a run for it, knowing the guards weren't too far behind. Dia and I made it out by days 62 through 64, but were quickly stopped by a void mech. How infuriating. You broke one of the king's weapons. I'll make you pay for this. The general charged at me, ready to show me his fury. Dia and I launched an unyielding assault on the robotic adversary, bombarding it relentlessly from all directions. My powerful sonic boom reverberated through the air, making the foe stagger back, while Dia unleashed a barrage of diamond crystals that surged through the enemy, making contact with an echoing clang. While our attacks were undeniably strong, his mechanical exterior was even stronger. Our abilities couldn't penetrate his thick metallic skin and his programmed fighting spirit proved unwavering. Each attack I landed on him just seemed to glance off his body like it was nothing. This isn't good. I need an opening. I watched as Dia snuck behind the general and landed a surprise attack that stunned him momentarily. What? How did you get behind me? No, Max! On it! I charged up a massive sonic blast and hit him directly, causing him to malfunction and fall to his knees. When the dust cleared, all that remained was some sort of note. Yoink! <laughs> yeah, we should keep moving before the cavalry arrives. Thankfully, on days 65 through 68, D and I returned to the base in one piece. <sighs> That was too close for comfort. Agreed. We stalled the production, but I need to find the remaining ingots before the Void King can complete the weapon. I got to work on expanding the outer perimeter of the base. I started with the walls, reinforcing them with blocks of diamond to ensure the Void army couldn't break in again. Additionally, I surrounded the perimeter with traps to secure the safety of my base even more. Afterwards, I added another building just for Dia to live in. Since her first room was destroyed and she helped me so much, I renovated a sturdy diamond hut just for her. Finally, I placed my next ingot in my display room, completing my expansion of the base. Shortly after, Dia came up to me with the note that the general dropped in the previous battle. You might want to take a look at this. The civilization of Amethyst Constructs is hidden north of here. We've been unable to locate them for years, but our forces are getting closer. The Void King will have even more rare ore for his weapon. Oh no! I need to help them before the Void King kills them! Between days 69 and 72, Dia and I made our way up north towards the Amethyst Kingdom. I couldn't find it, but Dia managed to sniff it out. Good work, Dia! Looks like we were lucky enough to beat the King here. Oi, stop where you are! Relax, we're not evil or anything. We just have some business here. Oh no you don't! We don't allow outsiders in unless they present an offering to our king. I offered up any of the things I had on hand, but to no avail. Only an endless pearl will do. Please, it's an emergency! Rules are rules. So D and I set off in search of an endless pearl. What's that? You got something? Dia had picked up a scent. I followed her all the way to the beach. When we got there, she began to dig. Max, look! It's a treasure chest! No way! I reached down into the hole and opened the chest to find an endless pearl. But when I took it, something revealed itself. A ghost? On days 73 through 75, I was face to face with a ghost from the cursed chest. When it appeared, it turned the sky dark. Return the endless spell or perish. 
Not a chance! I was thinking this was gonna be an easy fight, but the ghost suddenly spawned a bunch of other ghosts to aid him in battle. Uh oh, this is gonna be harder than I thought. With no other choice, I rushed into battle against the ghosts. The specters flitted above my head. Even with my incredible size, it was hard to reach them in melee. I used my sonic boom attack to blast them from a distance and started mowing them down. With so many swarming from different directions, my blue flame power seared all of them in a devastating area of effect. I ain't afraid of no ghosts! One by one, ghosts started falling. When they did get close enough, my diamond claws raked across their intangible bodies. With one final blow, I defeated the last ghost of the swarm. I did it! Time to get this endless pearl offering back to the king. I then returned to the city and handed the guard the offering he had requested. This will do. You may meet the king. I then entered the civilization and found the Amethyst King's throne room. What do you require, Diamond Warden? I began explaining to him the severity of the situation with the Void King. The Void King? Pfft, I think we're just fine. Why aren't you worried? The city is hidden thanks to the power of our mythical ingot. Only rare mobs can pick up where we are. Suddenly, the sky went dark and another one of the Void King's generals descended upon the city. Thanks for leading me here, little Diamond Warden. I followed your mark all the way here to you. Everyone run! On days 76 through 79, the Void General rained destruction upon the King's city. I knew I wasn't strong enough to fight him without the power of the next ingot. We've run out of time! Where is your mythical ingot located? It's located south of here in a nearby ruin, but it's guarded by ancient tech. You won't survive. I'll take my chances. D and I quickly rushed off towards the ruin to acquire the next ingot. After some traveling, we arrived at a massive structure that held our prize. The Amethyst King said that this place was guarded by ancient tech. We better be careful. Only after taking a few steps forward, we were suddenly attacked by a forgotten guardian and his goons. They all swarmed around us, and the massive forgotten one slammed down upon us with his fists. With so many of them, I had two strategies to use. The first was to blast them all with fire and hopefully kill them all at once. But as stragglers made it through, I needed to focus them down with powerful punches and sonic booms. We were beginning to become overwhelmed by the Forgotten Guardian's goons. Dia then made a brave choice and began taking on most of the horde. I'll hold them off! Grab the ingot! Quick! Right! I did what she said and made a break for the mythical ingot. Once I grabbed it, I felt its intense power, causing me to gain 5 extra hearts and grow even larger in size. With this newfound power, I gained a new diamond spike power. It's go time! I charged back into battle using my new diamond spike abilities to plow through my enemies. Dia was holding her own till I swooped back in to deal massive damage to the forgotten goons. Diamond spikes emerged all around, piercing into the enemy. The forgotten guardian and I clashed with our giant sizes in a battle of epic proportions. I started pouring out all of my powers against them. It wasn't long until I took down all of the goons and defeated the forgotten guardian. No time to heal! I gotta save the Amethyst people! On days 80 through 83, I charged back into the fray to take on the Void General. I was weakened from my run-in with the Forgotten Guardians, but I knew that with my new abilities, I could power through. But the Void General was powerful. He spewed Void Flames out in all directions that would wither me if I got hit by them. Ugh, I gotta avoid these at all costs! I blasted him with my sonic booms. My diamond spikes wouldn't work as effectively since my opponent was flying, so I needed to make use of every tool in my arsenal. But the Void General wasn't keen on letting me blast him from afar, so he attempted to blind me. After some time, my weakness was catching up to me. I was losing. Luckily, Dia stepped in and started fighting. Dia blasted her diamond powers, distracting the Void General so I can regain my strength. The battle raged on with my companion doing her best against the powerful enemy. I helped from a distance with Sonic Blast and Diamond Breath. After a while, the Void General fell. We thought we had won till he rose once more, even stronger than before. He blasted out Void powers, sending me and Dia both flying. Unfortunately, Dia still wasn't strong enough to fight this new form. Just when I thought it was all over, Dia evolved again. She grew even bigger and more powerful. She was the ultimate Diamond Wolf. I had a chance to heal a bit, and with our powers combined, we took on the second evolution of the Void General. She was so much more powerful now, the General was no match for her powerful Diamond Teeth. I blasted at him from afar with my sonic boom, while Dia fought up close, and the general's knockback explosions had much less of an effect on her now, and she just kept running back into fight. We were starting to seriously wear him down, and with one final blow, she managed to take out the boy general for the both of us. Thank you so much for saving my people, Max. Of course! I need reinforcements for my fight against the Void King. Will you and your people join me in this fight? 
Of course, we are in your debt. On days 84 through 86, I led the Amethyst people back to my base where they'd be safe. As the last Amethyst person ran into the base, the ground started to tremble. That's not a good sign. As if on cue, the Void King had arrived at my base. Oh no, he found me. I knew I could sense you here, and here you are in the flesh. What do you want? You've been having quite a lot of fun gathering up those ingots of yours, but it'll all be for naught. Yeah, right. Once I get the last thing that I need, you're going down. Will I? Don't forget my weapon is nearly complete too. I won't let you finish it. I'll sabotage it just like before. You won't be so lucky this time. The Void King unleashed a blast of fire from his hands, setting my base ablaze. No! These flames are as hot as lava! I don't think my base can take this heat! On days 87 through 89, I watched in horror as the Void King was terrorizing my base and melting it to the ground. Sir, the weapon is nearly complete. You are needed for the final procedures. Very well. Looks like I'll finish you off with my new toy instead. See you soon. The Void King left my base in ruins before I could even get a hit. Hey, come back here. I'm not done yet. I followed after the King at full speed. I wasn't going to let him get away with everything. I turned a corner and found a massive nether portal. Knowing that my fiercest battle yet would be waiting on the other side, I took a deep breath and dove in. Once through, I found myself in front of the ultimate weapon. It was way bigger than before, and it looked like it was almost complete. Not on my watch! I ran to destroy the weapon like I did before, but the Void King ambushed me. It was a trap! Before I had time to react, the Void King got the jump on me. With one thwack from his colossal axe, the battle had begun. I attempted to fight back the best I could, but I was taken aback by the King's ambush. Every move I made, the Void King was one step ahead of me. I couldn't stay close, or I'd surely meet the sharp edge of his monumental blade and be cut in half. I distanced myself from him and readied my long-range attacks. I emitted a shrieking sonic boom, but the blast bounced off the king's substantial armor, and the king had a long-range ability of his own. From his palm, scorching flames surged forward, singeing the very air around me. I retaliated with flames my own, but it was no use. Their heat was not comparable to that of the king's. My only choice was to try and keep him back. I attempted to stun him by shooting out diamond crystals from the ground. Although he was temporarily halted, nothing could stop him from charging forward, ready to finish me off. Despite my new strength, nothing I could do was working against the king. I was running out of energy, and with half a heart left, I was knocked out. On days 90 through 92, I was in some kind of foggy void. I turned around and was shocked to see my mom standing in front of me. Mom? Am I dead? Not at all, my dear. You're dreaming. What am I gonna do? The Void King completed his weapon. I failed you. You never failed me, my son. You followed my advice, and it led you to the ingots. I'm still missing one, though. I can't defeat the Void King without crafting my ultimate weapon. <laughs> Fret not, my dear. Let the ingots guide your way. After her words of advice, I started to drift back to consciousness. When I woke up, I found myself in a cage dangling over a pit of lava. I was about to be melted down. On days 93 through 94, I did my best to break out of my cage, but it wasn't working. I had gotten so far, I couldn't let this be the end. <laughs> Poor little warden stuck in a cage. I started trying to formulate a plan, when suddenly, Dia came out of nowhere and attacked the guard from behind. <laughs> yes! She sent them flying into the lava pit where he immediately perished. How did you find me? No time to talk, let's go! I fled the scene with her, and we hopped through the portal back into the overworld. Thanks for saving me, Dia. Anytime, Max! You're my best friend! We destroyed the portal before anyone could chase after us, and then headed back towards the base. On day 95, Dee and I returned to the base, which lay in ruins. <sighs> Guess we got our work cut out for us, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, we started putting out the fires around the base, cleaning up the debris, and fixing what was broken. Afterwards, I added an area for the Amethyst people to stay. Right this way, after you. Welcome to the base. Nice to meet ya. Enjoy your stay. While they settled in, using more amethyst blocks, I added a proper gated door to finally secure the base's entrance. Lastly, I placed the new ingot in my collection room, and after I placed it, they all began to glow. Whoa, what the? A map appeared before me, and it looked like it might lead to the next ingot. Huh, is that what my mom meant by the ingots guiding me? I have to know. On day 96, I followed the map deep into the caves, and it led me to a deep, dark biome. 
I could barely contain my anticipation as I searched for the final piece of the ultimate weapon. I entered a huge cave and spotted the final ingot waiting for me inside. Nice! Easy peasy! I started walking over to it, but I was stopped by a massive Warden Hydra. It immediately started blasting me with a powerful beam from all three of its heads, and I was thrown back. Luckily, I was able to recover quickly, and I retaliated with my sonic blast and diamond spikes. Its teeth were sharp, and they gnashed at me with all three heads. Since it was a Skulk Hydra, it was immune to my Warden powers, but I switched to my diamond abilities, and they were super effective. Eventually, I was able to wear down the beast, and his attack were beginning to falter. I dealt one final blow, and the massive beast was defeated. After defeating the final guardian, I was able to approach and pick up the final mythical ingot. I gained five hearts, increased armor, and all of my abilities became even more powerful. With all the mythical ingots in my possession, I rushed back to my base as fast as I could and placed the last one on its pedestal. All of the ingots began to glow with power, and then suddenly they all vanished from their spots. In their place was an epic new hammer and shield. I've done it! I forged the ultimate weapon! Now it's time to defeat the Void King! On day 97, I was walking towards the nether portal to face off with the Void King for my final battle. I was feeling nervous, and I knew that this was gonna be my toughest fight yet. <sighs> I don't feel so good. I wasn't sure if it was my nerves, but I started to feel dizzy. My limbs grew heavier and heavier until the fatigue was crushing. <sighs> What's going on? I couldn't endure it any longer and I passed out. When I woke up, I was inside of a strange black void as a baby diamond warden. Nothing was there except for a lone house. Wait, why am I a baby? Wasn't I on my way to defeat the Void King? I looked around and my heart swelled with emotion. To my surprise, my dad was standing in the void with me. Dad! I ran towards him and happily reunited with him. I thought he was dead. Dad, I missed you so much. What do you mean, son? We've been playing catch all day long. We have? But that's not right. What do you mean? You and mom were both killed by the Void King. I had to gather all six ingots to forge a weapon strong enough to avenge you and all of our people. You're talking crazy, son. Are you sure you didn't just have a nightmare? Nightmare? Wait, am I in a dream? I have to get to the bottom of this. I tried to run in a different direction, but my dad stepped in front of me. I knew something was terribly wrong. You're not going anywhere. On day 98, my dad took me inside of the strange lone house to give me a stern talking to. You're in time out until you clear your head of all this nightmare nonsense. You can't hold me here forever! We'll see about that. My dad stormed out of the room, locking me inside. That's definitely not my dad. This is a trap set up to keep me from reaching the Void King. I tried to find a way to escape, but even with my powers, I was too small to break through the building. Everything I tried was useless. Brute force isn't gonna work this time. Suddenly, I had an idea. I turned towards the door and tried to fake my sweetest voice. Dad? Dad? The door opened up to reveal the imposter. What is it, son? I'm sorry for causing so much trouble. You're right. This was all just a dream. <laughs> Can't we go outside and play together more? Oh, son, I'm glad you've come to your senses. Let's go. He let me out of the house, and once his guard was down, I hit him with a surprise attack from behind. He turned towards me full of rage. Ah, oh, you stubborn runt! I went at him with everything I had, but I was much smaller in my baby state. I had to be careful, otherwise I would get overwhelmed. The imposter used his hulking strength to attack my diamond baby warden form. His warden roar was extremely powerful, and I did my best to dodge it as much as possible, but he got in a few deadly hits that wore down my health. I realized he wasn't a diamond diamond warden like my mom, so I started using my diamond powers against him and they were starting to wear him down. He began mimicking my abilities, slamming the ground with the stomp power and even breathing the powerful diamond breath upon me. I might have been small, but my will to win was even stronger than this doppelganger. It was hard fighting my dad knowing he was killed by the Void King. I couldn't bear to watch him die a second time, but I didn't have a choice. Every attack I sent on him hurt me as well, not only physically, but mentally. Even though I knew he wasn't my real dad, the battle was difficult. I swallowed down my personal feelings and continued to fight. I had to get out of this dream no matter what. You're not my dad! With one final attack, I took down the imposter once and for all. Just then, I woke up in the real world to find an evoker standing before me. On day 99, I was face to face with a mysterious evoker. I knew at that moment who this guy was. It was you! You put me in that dream! I did, and I would have gotten away with it too if you had just given in to my illusion. How did you break through my disguise? I know my dad better than anyone. He would never doubt me. 
Pity. You could have slept forever in a blissful dream. You've wasted enough of my precious time. I have to take out the Void King now. On day 100, I returned to the Nether to face off with the Void King. When I arrived, I saw that he was about to launch his weapon. Stop! What are you gonna do about it? Before I could do anything, he flipped the switch and a countdown began. I gotta stop him before the countdown runs out. I charged at him wielding my ultimate weapon, and the final battle began. The king attempted to slice through me with his mighty axe, but his weapon was no match for my own. With the fierce swing, I slammed down on the foe with my new diamond hammer, shattering his once impenetrable armor and dealing insurmountable damage. Now, it was the Void King who was attempting to escape my close range attacks, but I couldn't let him get away that easily. I shot out a row of diamond crystals from below, ensnaring him within them. He staggered back and emitted a burst of embers from his palm, but once again his attacks proved useless against my enhanced new abilities. I took cover behind my diamond shield, its defense is so strong that even the king's molten flames bounce off of its sturdy base and back towards him, setting him ablaze. I retaliated with my own fire attack, the flames engulfing the void king switching from red to blue. The king had finally met his match. I dealt one final blow with the ultimate weapon, and the void king was defeated. I stopped the timer just in time, and the day was saved!